Hello everyone, this is Rajesh Sengupta and we are here in the second installment of our week on textiles and contemporary art practice in India. So, as we have already started talking about some of those examples in which we understand that how textiles have been a crucial part of contemporary art making in India, we will continue this discussion with this project by Nalini Malani and Iftikar Dadi. And in this project, we see that I mean how it managed to sort of look into certain certain boundaries that we create in the post independence era and as we know that 1947 was a decisive moment for a number of communities and especially the communities who were there in the frontier provinces. So for example, both Bengal and the western frontier that is Punjab and Sindh region. And so what we see during this area, I mean what, what we see during this time that when with the partition of the Indian subcontinent, with the partition of India during this time, this this two nation states were created that is India and Pakistan and then of course the way we see that I mean eventually Pakistan was then um, uh, made as like East Pakistan, West Pakistan and then Eastern Pakistan was then transformed into the nation state of Bangladesh in 1970 and so so this is something we find that during the uh, uh, this 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 particular point in time after 1947 the the map of the Indian subcontinent had gone through a, a, a radical transformation and with this transformation we see a number of communities uh, perhaps like a lot of people in the Indian subcontinent were affected by this partition and we, we can see that I mean how this kind of uh, uh, lines those were drawn in terms of understanding that this, the, the borders which were created, this newly created borders, how they have shaped the idea of communities very differently from how it existed before. So, those issues are something that we see that to be brought out by certain artists who faced this, this uh, 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 perhaps like I mean the trauma of the partition or like whose family was displaced and, and, and of course like I mean they have suffered this process of partition which was a decision made by the uh, colonial government. So this is something we see that to be there reflected in this work called Bloodlines that was first made in 1997 and in this work by uh, Nalini Malani and Nalini Malani is this Indian artist but whose family migrated from Karachi to Bombay during the partition and then we also see Iftikar Dadi who was based in Karachi during this time and of, of course after that I mean he moved to US to teach art history. So uh, what we see that I mean and of course if Iftikar Dadi today is one of the uh, very well known uh, art historian who, who specializes on contemporary art making in the South Asian context. So we see that the collaboration between artist and art historian that had resulted into re-looking at this map or not perhaps the map but then like I mean the, the this, this lines, the this, this border lines which they call as blood lines and by blood line perhaps the indication is there towards understanding that the shared uh, uh, trauma or like I mean the shared experience that, that runs in the blood of all the communities in, the, in this frontier regions as well as in the subcontinent and then how the same blood line that divides these communities. So that idea then we see that to be there that is projected in this 16 um, uh, square um, uh, canvases. So this, this panels that we see in the right side of the screen here that is on display. So all these panels are then arranged in a particular way so that I mean this the map that was created by Radcliffe in I mean that that is called as the Radcliffe line and so this border line is exemplified in the arrangement of these panels and then we see that I mean except for these lines those are created there is no other map that exists but it kind of gives us a sense of what is there in the western frontier what is there in the eastern frontier and the space in between is void. So this kind of like I mean understanding which gives a certain indication but it does not really uh, tell us the entire story is something that focuses on the borders and not in the land that sort of like I mean stays in between. Now 
then we get into the details about how these lines are created, how these panels are created. So we see sequin or chumki that is something that is used for making this, this surfaces on these panels. And these panels the way they are created we see that there are those golden sequins here. And then of course like I mean we see the blood line or this border lines are created by this red sequence and then there is this ultramarine blue sequin that is used for indicating water. So these are the kind of like I mean this three kind of sequins are used for giving a suggestion of the land, giving a suggestion of the sea and of course the suggestion of the border line and which is which is executed in red. So these are the kind of aspects those are then sort of prioritized in making these borders that we see and sequin is something that is used in a lot of textile making if we think about the cheaply made zardozi textiles and then of course like I mean all the attire which are associated with a bridal textile, wedding or any kind of occasion we know that how this in the recent years we see at least since the 1970s and so on how the South Asians they sort of connect themselves with uh, 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 this this kind of the, the glitters of sequins and and how this kind of uh, this this zardozi work embroidered works are then preferred not only in one country but in all these countries so for example in Bangladesh in India and in Pakistan so for that reason we find this particular way of chumki embroidery that is there that exists in this three countries and appreciated by the communities in all these places uh, even though there are many political differences or like I mean differences in terms of like I mean how one understand their religious identity and so on. But then this was something that was considered by the artist and the art historian both of them or the collaborators as a unifying way for, for the South Asians to come together. So the sequin embroidery and that is how textile again steps in into this uh, understanding about the, the, the divide and the connectedness between these communities and that is how this, this discussion in which we see the bloodlines, the border lines are ex, uh, sort of uh, stressed on but then we also see the connected practices that perhaps like I mean uh, even though this, this kind of borders exist, this connectedness is something that still flows as the lifeline for all these communities across these countries. So this is the way in which we see again that textile making, zardozi making or using chumki or sequin in embroidered textile has served as a way for the collaborators to understand that the, the how the connectedness of these communities can be critically looked at by this artwork. Then we also see that in textiles there is a heightened sense of activism that is embedded and in some cases we see that how certain practitioners they have focused on the textiles role in activism in resistance and that had become a part of this discussion and debate in the contemporary art field in India. So this is uh, uh, what we see in the right side of the screen. There are a number of these cloths, this again untailored pieces of cloth and which are worn in the lower part of the body in the uh, by particular community members in Manipur and part of northeastern India. So what we see that I mean the Thangkul community members or the Thangkul women in Manipur and part of northeast India what, what they wear and then how that was made as part of like I mean this discussion or like um, um, uh, discussion on resistance by, by incorporating textile here. So we see that this textiles this which is called as uh, Luin Gamla Kashan. Kashan is this, uh, 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 this, this untailored piece of fabric that we see displayed here in this gallery space. So all these discussions are something that we have here are made by Zamthing La Ruiva from Manipur and of course she also comes from this Thangkul community and there what we see that I mean she was trained or, or she, she learned weaving from, from her family and she continued to weave this, this uh, 
these discussions but then there was a particular moment in in 1980s during this time what we see that uh, um, a community member this this woman whose name was Luin Gamla and and uh, she uh, she she uh, she died when when resisting her rape by the armed forces and and during this time uh, her her death was uh, I mean uh, then uh, something La Riva decided to make cushion that is that is dedicated to uh, 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 Luingamla and and that is how like I mean this particular kind of cushion that that was uh, uh, um, made by something La Ruiva which which came to be known as Luingamla cushion and and this Luingamla cushion is something that we see that is um, um, sort of characterized by this red um, color and then of course like I mean there are variations in the red and then there are those vertical strips that we see in the both sides of this cushion and then there are those horizontal sort of like I mean those parallel lines uh, usually there are four of the four set of these lines horizontal lines that sort of like I mean pass through this cushion and so this is a textile that she started making as as uh, to, to commemorate uh, the death of uh, Luin Gamla and then at the same time it's not just about commemoration but it was also about remembering the resistance of this woman uh, has her, her valor her courage and and how she also sort of uh, uh, you know was was attempted to be subjugated by the authority so those all those ideas we see them to be there much more symbolically represented in this unique cushion that was made by something la Ruiva. And so initially when she started making them and then there were also community members we see them they came forward and started making songs about this uh, um, um, about this sad demise of uh, 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 Luingamla and then at the same time we see that this this songs the textile all of them they became part of a larger performance by by the um, the community members the, the the Thankul women in in Manipur and so from this time we also find that how there is a particular day in a year and that is around 24th of January uh, and and uh, in the left side of the screen we have the, the Thankul women's association singing songs for singing songs something la wrote for Luingamla and this is something we see that I mean and how the all the women they from the Thankul community they have gathered in a particular place to commemorate the death of Luingamla and it's not just the death of Luingamla but it's a reminder for all the women to be resilient it is a reminder for the kind of atrocities that take place on women particular community members the minorities and everything so so those kind of aspects we see them to be there as as when the textile initiated this discussion and the community members when when they gather all of them they wear similar kind of this this cloth that is that is understood as this luingam lakashan and so the women they come and they wear this particular kind of cushion and and then they they gather and it's a symbolic way of sort of being in solidarity with with the deceased one also with the all other women who are still struggling so so this is how we see how textile making textile and then sort of me involving the entire community to take part in activism is something that is exemplified in something la rivers uh, practice so her practice was not necessarily meant to be displayed in the gallery spaces but then eventually we see after the recognition of her work after years of uh, her, her work then certain um, uh, uh, platforms they, they sort of decided to display this 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 uh, uh, her her um, uh, discussions in the gallery spaces and as we see that I mean if we compare these two images that we have on screen that one is during the performance and one is there displayed on the gallery walls and so during the performances it gets a different kind of meaning when we see that the uh, women from the community they embrace this cushion they also sort of embody the the this this sad story of uh, and of course this this empowering story of uh, of Luhingamla and and then 
um, when when all those um, textiles are then sort of separated from the community members and displayed in the gallery space, they gain a different kind of meaning in which in this white cube, we see this bright red color, it, it sort of almost uh, makes this ghostly presence of the ones who are not uh, present there uh, in, in, in person, but almost that how their resistance that sort of resists the, uh, uh, the traditional display scheme of the galleries and then it sort of uh, takes us in terms of understanding that how the community uh, and, and art making and, and the, the contemporary art uh, practices whether they can be hand in hand or there are frictions between them. Now, with these things, we also see that when this kind of works are displayed in the gallery, it is not only about that the, the differences between when the same uh, object is used by the community and then when this is completely disassociated with the community and then displayed in a gallery space. But when they are displayed in a gallery space, then it sort of uh, uh, attracts a different kind of audience to them. And that is how we see that the resonance of this kind of stories can be sort of circulated in, in uh, outside of the community. In that way, like I mean, certain stories which are then suppressed by the authority or particular kind of, uh, um, um, I mean, of course, like I mean, the um, in in this this uh, in this hegemonic system, we see that I mean those. Uh, ideas then then can also be spoken about in a different space when when they uh, this this kind of objects are displayed in the gallery space so this, this issues we see that what is the advantage and disadvantage of displaying certain kind of community textiles or objects which are part of community practices in the gallery space so there are pros and cons in both cases and then what what also happens in this case that uh, uh, zamtingla riva is someone who was not trained as a metropolitan artist something that i have already mentioned in the um, uh, as as part of our discussion uh, very early uh, this this week that there will be people will be talking about them some of them are metropolitanly trained artists and then some someone like something La Riva is not really trained in the metropolitan art sphere, but then her practice is something that, that had resonated with the kind of activities and, and, and the endeavors that, 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 is, that is prioritized in the contemporary field of art making and, and generating discussion about communities. And that is how we see how certain kind of practices are then made part of like I mean the contemporary art making in India and, and abroad. So, this is another uh, display of something like reverse uh, cushions. So, here we see this, this cushions are there and then like I mean of course, this is this very characteristic uh, Luing Gamla cushion and then later on he, she, she also came up with this rose cushion and that was also in memory of another community member and who had also suffered the atrocities of the authority. So, this is something we find that how certain kind of like I mean textile making and with this embedded idea, we do not see that, I mean, there are figurative motifs that sort of uh, narrates the story of this women, this valiant women, but then we see there are symbolic gestures in which like there are lines, there are particular kind of motifs, there is a particular way of arranging the composition and then the color balance and everything, they come to signify the, uh, um, the, the, the struggles of this women in a way that those are not really sort of spoken about in, in any other ways. So, uh, in this way we see that Zamthing La Riva's practice did not completely depart from this, this traditional way of of making the, uh, um, um, the cloth for the lower body of the women in their community, but then it certainly made a departure because in the traditional uh, setup, if we see that the fabrics are made for for the entire community, and then the motifs are something that is shared by a lot of community members. But then in this case, we see there is an almost personalized way of customizing these motifs and making them much more contextual to a specific context. I mean, it is not just about uh, um, something that the entire community uh, uh, 
resonates with in terms of like if there are deity figures if there are belief systems and so on but this is a very specific moment that happened in the late 20th century and that event is then commemorated by the way of lines colors and and the uh, arrangement of motifs those are those are then implemented in this textiles so this is how we see how there is a uh, something like reverse position is almost in between uh, an individual artist as well as someone as a com community member and when in in the dhaka art summit in in uh, 2018 when when uh, her her cushions were displayed we see that to be there in side by side with uh, unnamed drawings by the rohingya refugees in bangladesh and in this once we see that some of this this drawings that we have in the left side of the screen in which we see that there are figurative depiction of people i mean either they are in pain or like i mean Uh, the the part of their survival is shown in by this this very minimalistic way of drawing them so this this kind of like i mean uh, uh, this issues that that is that is still there a prevalent issue about survival struggle uh, um, uh, atrocities by authority and then like i mean the the kind of uh, um, the, the the struggles especially there for the minority communities so all those ideas those are not just there in this cushion but also there in other forms of artworks for example these drawings by the rohingya refugees they are all sort of put together in a one space so that one the viewers can see that there are parallels between people um, um, perhaps they are separated by uh, the the boundaries of nation state perhaps they are separated by linguistic and cultural differences but then there are also certain kind of shared experiences as we see and to sort of people to understand that i mean this this the relevance of one particular art object that can be the cushion that can be the the drawing is not something that is just limited to uh, uh, this this objects but when they are sort of put in relationship to one another then their relevance is heightened then we can see their relevance in many different ways something that is not revealed very easily so this is how we see how this kind of art objects when the, uh, or like i mean this kind of objects when they are displayed in the gallery space they generate a discussion that is that is very different from when they are there in the community setup and perhaps that is also one of the ways or one of the reasons for what we understand that why uh, uh, incorporation of textile or or sort of like i mean having this conversation between textile and contemporary art field is something that is crucial now we also see that this textile is something that had been part of research and practice and some of the artists they have they are trained as both art historian and artist and they have incorporated textile as part of their practice and to either sort of like i mean evoke certain kind of memory or go, or sort of revisiting certain aspects of history but then also blurring the line between memory history and reality and and of course that i mean you know what is there in terms of the arts role in in sort of bridging the gap between them and by that what we see that the art practice in this case it almost becomes a historical fiction or a fiction that connects these different dots so this is an image and this is the uh, on the slide we have a display a display shot from this exhibition project that is called rivers of blood and and that was uh, executed by artist and art historian paula san gupta in in 2009 and it was displayed in the kemol prescott road in 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 uh, mumbai and so in this project what we see rivers of blood that apollo san gupta had revisited her family history which again goes back to the time of the partition and how her parents they moved from uh, the nation state of bangladesh today to uh, west bengal and then what all happened during this time and how she as 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 this second generation uh, person who had not uh, uh, directly faced uh, uh, um, the, the the horrors of partition but then certain uh, things which persisted from their 
the parents' generation and, and how that still affect their understanding of identity, the, the shared notion of culture, but also the divide between this, this, um, um, and the, the cultures. And for what happens in terms of like what, what Paula Sengupta also sort of discussed is that how people in, in Bangladesh as well as in West Bengal and after the partition that I mean both these places people speak Bangla, people eat fish but then and rice of course but then there are also there are certain ways in which there are those intricacies that got involved and with those we see that certain ideas about like I mean identity those are created in the in the subsequent years uh, during the partition after the partition and which makes the uh, uh, this 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 kind of issues very pertinent that how uh, uh, or where our identity stand so here in here we see that i mean there are those two closets which were created and in which uh, two two textiles were made and i mean of course one is this this um, this this army costume which her father owned and then there is this nokshi katha that that we see that is there which was made by her mother so these two family heirlooms as we can see and those were made part of Paulus and Gupta's installation project as making these two closets for one for her father, one for her mother and their different experiences about partition and then perhaps something related to domesticity, something related to exteriority and then how those things are then brought together with like I mean the general aesthetics of a cabinet and then all other um, uh, textiles or the associated objects which are there. So textile is something as we know that I mean that can be folded, kept into a bag or, or a trunk. We see those trunks are there as part of this display here as well. So trunks are something we see that to be always carried forward by the people who are traveling and instead of like I mean taking big objects and, and for, for the difficulty of carrying those objects, we see that a lot of cases textiles are carried forward with people. So that's the reason we also see that how this kind of textiles are, are then made part of the family heirloom. And when Paula Sengupta incorporated these textiles as part of her art practice, then she did not just show these textiles as part of like um, a history or she did not just show them as like those historical artifacts, those are displayed in the museum, but then made them as part of the life almost by sort of reintroducing this, this cabinet like structure. And then of course that how the different objects which are associated with these textiles, they can give more much more context about the lives of her parents and, and their relevance in the society today. So by this kind of arrangement, we see that certain objects are there from history. Then she recalls certain memories or like I mean, certain oral narratives and make them part of the display. And then the way she sort of like I mean fabricates these cabinets is something that that becomes part of like I mean making this historical fiction. So textile plays again a very important role in terms of how this entire historic fiction is created. And she had also carried forward this idea about continuing this kind of historical fiction into her sort of like, I mean, her larger art practice. And she, she comes from the background of printmaking. And so printmaking, drawing, layering, all those ideas, something we also see that how printing on textile is associated with printmaking. All those ideas, we see them to be merged together when Paula Sengupta looks into textile, studies textile and incorporates them into her own practice. So in her work, we also see this, this boundary between something that is strictly utilitarian and something that is non-utilitarian as an art object is again sort of collided. And this set of work that came from her one of her recent exhibition that is called the Porcelain Rose. And in this set of work, we do not see direct use of textile, but they are actually made on this layered rice papers. And in this ones, we see certain uh, 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 observation and research she had done on the chintz textile or the kalamkari textile as something that is then incorporated and, and made part of this discussion and certain ideas about animating figures, certain ideas about movement, certain about uh, certain ideas about boundary, border and, and margins, 
all of them are then incorporated in the drawing those are done on paper so in one hand we see that she is someone who uses textile as part of the work on the other hand we see that i mean how she uh, sort of like i mean after absorbing the knowledge about textile how she is successful in terms of translating that on paper as well so these are some of the ways in which we see that how the artists today, the contemporary artists today, they have successfully demonstrated that how differently textiles can be made uh, use of in, in, in the field of contemporary art practice for research, practice, activism and many other ways. Thank you.